Hello friends, welcome to the video tutorial of link and we are studying link specific programming construct. Today's video will cover the concept of delegate. Basically, in link we use lambda expression, but lambda expression is again based on the concept of delegate. So that's why we are studying the concept of delegate. So let us understand it in more detail. So what is delegate? So delegate is an object which refers to a method and it is nothing but a pointer to your function. See basically whenever we define an object it refers to an instance of a class okay but delegate it is also an object but instead of referencing to an instance of class it will refer to a method. So sometimes it is also called as it is pointer to a function. Now you can use this delegate keyword to define your delegate. We are going to see this part practically also so it will be more clear to you. Now once you create a delegate okay then what we have to do you have to create a object of delegate then it will refer to a one of the method whose method signature will match with the delegate declaration. Now remember this thing that delegate will point to only the method whose method signature and delegate declaration will match okay it will not point to any method we have to consider this condition look at here and call those methods which method signature matches with the delegate declaration means assume that a delegate declaration is something like this that it is returning integer type of value and accepting two integer type of value. So it can point to only those method whose method signature or method prototype is something like that that it will also return integer type of value and it will accept integer type of argument okay. Now let us see the application of delegate where delegates are useful actually for the callback methods and for events delegates are used more frequently in window application delegates are generally used for events because what happens there whenever that particular event raises okay you have to specify which method you want to call and that is done with the help of delegate now with the help of delegate we can also define anonymous method and we are going to see the anonymous method topic in detail in a separate video. So you can say anonymous method is also related to with the delegate. Similarly lambda expressions are also a more convenient syntax for using delegates. After completing anonymous method, we are also going to study lambda expression in a separate video. So just I want to tell you that there is a relationship between anonymous method and lambda expression and delegate. So let us understand all these things practically. So here I am using same console application that we created last time while studying anonymous type and extension method. Okay. Here I added one class named as delegate demo. Okay. Now what is the first thing you have to do? First of all you have to create a delegate. Okay. Now let us see how to create a delegate. So again it can have a access specified public, private or protected. Here I am going to create a public delegate. Okay. Now then after you have to use keyword delegate and then you have to specify the return type delegate name and then after the parameter type. Now here I am going to create a delegate that will return float type of value. Uh, let us name it as power delegate okay and it is accepting one float type of value okay. Now as you can see here I define this delegate inside this class okay so it is available through this class only if you declared this delegate under this namespace 
so it will be available directly to all the classes in this project okay so currently i am going to keep it in my class okay now let us create some methods that are similar to this okay so this delegate can point to that method okay because we i already told you what is delegate delegate is a pointer to function but when we, it can point to that function if method signature and delegate signature or delegate declaration both will match then only it can point so let us create one method so here i'm saying public float say square and it is accepting one float type of value so this particular method is calculating a square of a number here i'll say return n into n let us create one more method which is again have a same method signature as of our delegate declaration so public float q float n and here i'll say return n into n into n okay now we're done with this method actually you can have a complicated code okay we are just studying the concept that's why i'm specifying very simple functions okay now as you can see here look at here this is your delegate declaration this is your method signature both are matching even this method signature is also matching with your delegate declaration so my delegate can easily point to this method now what is the next step we will call this method with this delegate okay so first of all what we have to do we have to create a object of delegate first this power delegate object will be created and we have to make that delegate to point to one of this function okay so let us create one main method so we can call that function also that's why i'm going to write it in a main method so here power delegate say dlg square is equal to now the method name method name is what method name is square so you have to specify this method name here so square actually you are not getting intelligence can you guess the reason yes what can be the reason see the main method is static whereas these methods are non static right and we know that static method can access static data only so what we have to do we have to make this method static so public static similarly i will make this method also static so uh, you may observe one thing that delegate can point to static method or non static method it do not affect now see if i say square now it is showing me here hmm? now with the help of delegate we are going to call the square function okay basically how we are going to call it we will specify the function name and then we will pass the value this is what this is normal function call this is what normal function call but now we are going to call it with the help of delegate that is with the help of this dlg square delegate so what you will say uh, let me collect the output in one variable say float s is equal to dlg sorry it should be dlg square okay then dot invoke you have to use invoke method to invoke the specified method or assign method to be called by delegate now to this invoke method you have to pass the required number of argument look at here in intellisense it is showing you that you have to pass one argument and which is of type float similarly let us create one more delegate one more delegate object not different delegate we are going to use the same delegate that is power delegate but we are going to create another object of it and that will point to our cube function so power delegate dlg cube 
is equal to what? Q. Just I want to show that the same delegate is pointing to two different methods. Okay. And so that you can understand the purpose of a delegate. So let us invoke that method. Here also I will create one method, say uh, create one variable that will collect the value written by our function. So here I will say dlg q. Even you can directly give call to the function using delegate. You do not have to use this invoke method. See, now I, and now I give call directly to it. Okay. So here I will pass a value 3. Okay. Now what will I do? I will just put a breakpoint here and we will see how your call get executed. So let me put a breakpoint here and here. Okay, so here I am pressing start. So actually I should set a startup object. I didn't set it. So definitely it will never execute. So let me set it. So delegate demo, right? Now here I am pressing F. 11 that is f step into okay now look at here where that function call gets switched it gets switched to the square function why actually we are calling the function through delegate and this delegate that is dlg square is pointing to which method it is pointing to square method right now it get executed now let us observe the output. See, it should be 81 as you can see here. Now this delegate is pointing to cube function. Again I am pressing step into. See, now the cube method get call. Okay, so I hope you understand the functionality of delegate. The way to use a delegate as I shown here is not used more frequently what we did here we created different different objects of delegate and then we make it point to the different different methods and then we are calling the methods via delegates but this approach is not used this is just for your better understanding basically uh, what approach is used generally uh, let me comment this part okay and now let me tell you one of the application of delegate mm, generally it is used in events as well as it is used in callback method. So here I am going to show you how to use delegates in callback method. So first of all, we will understand what is callback method. Now callback method means what? One function is passed as a parameter to another function. Then it is called as what? Callback method. Till now what we did? We created delegate object and then we assign a method to it. Whereas in callback method, what we are going to do? We are going to pass a one method as a parameter to another method. Okay. I hope you understand this. So whenever I am passing method as a parameter, I should collect it method reference in delegate. Okay. Whenever I am passing a method as a parameter to another method I should collect the reference of that method in a delegate right so what we are going to do we are going to create one calculate method say time being and what it does it will either calculate square or it will either either calculate cube whatever method I will pass to it okay and to that calculate method I will pass a required value also means to calculate square or to calculate cube I need to pass a number okay and that method will give me the result according to the methods that I have passed either square or cube so let me declare one variable that will hold my result so result is equal to so consider that we have calculate method yet now I didn't created it so we'll create it later so calculate and to this calculate method I'm going to pass one value say that value is 5 okay and to this method I'm going to pass a square method as a parameter to this method I am passing square method as a parameter now what I have to do 
I have to create one calculate method which is accepting one float type of argument and which is accepting reference to this another method. Okay. Now to hold the reference, I need delegate. Okay. And we already created the dele delegate here. So what I have to do? I just specify, I will just specify my argument of type what? Power delegate because this delegate declaration and my method signature matches. So let us write it. Again, I have to create a static function because I'm calling it from a main. So public static, let us say calculate, say float n comma power delegate DELG or DLG. Okay. And here I'll say float a result result is equal to d e d l g of n d l g of what n then return the result okay now since i am passing a reference of square method I am passing the reference of square method. It will be collected here. Okay. And according to that, square method will be called. So let me specify the return type here. Okay. Now it will work fine. Hmm. Now what we will do? Again, I will put a breakpoint here because we want to test this part only. Uh, now let me do one more thing. Again, I will give call to the calculate method. This time I'll pass 4 and I'll pass the reference of cube method because its method signature also matches with our delegate declaration. So let me put a breakpoint here. So say start. Again, I'm using step into. See, now call is given to the calculate method and if you observe here, See, currently it is pointing to what? It is pointing to the square method. Now, when we invoke the delegate, at that time, square method will be called and result will be calculated. It will be collected in this result variable and same result will be passed to our main function. Similarly, I give call to the calculate method. This time, I pass the reference of a cube. Just observe here. Now, while invoking, it will give call to the cube method as you can see here. And the result is returned. So, this is the proper way of using the delegate. So, many times there is a requirement to pass one function as an argument to the another function and we need to hold that function reference and for that we need a delegate. In links, many times what we did we pass a function, one function as an argument to another function. So that's why we need a delegate. So I hope you understand this concept. And if you have any doubt, definitely you can write it into the comment section. So don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you.